Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca, and this is my second devlog for my cozy mining game that I'm making in Scratch. If you didn't watch my first devlog, I recommend you do, since I slowly introduce you to different concepts in Scratch along with my game. In this devlog, I'll be mostly working on visuals for the shop as well as coding the shop. But first we are going to start by making the main area where the player can decide where they want to go, being our crow companion's home, the mines, or the shop. My idea is that this is a little outdoor scene with a tree for the home, a hole in the ground for the shop. It's a hole in the ground because it's run by an animal that lives in the ground. And lastly, a hole in a mountain of rocks for the mine. While working on this background, I was trying to keep the other backgrounds I made in mind since I want to keep them stylistically similar. So I'm using the same brushes along with the same color palette alongside the stylized simple cartoony style. Also, I want to address some concerns that some of you were having in my previous devlog. Some people were saying that switching from scratch coding to actual coding can be really tricky and that scratch doesn't really prepare you for that. And many of you are also saying you're not a big fan of scratch for coding and that is totally understandable. And I did forget to mention in my first devlog that I do have experience with Java coding. I took an online class about making mods for Minecraft. I don't remember everything from that class, but I do want to let you all know that when I do try to learn other coding languages like Java, Python, and so on, I do have an idea of what I'd be getting myself into. Scratch isn't the only coding language I'm familiar with. I wanted to start with Scratch before jumping into more complicated programs because I wanted to make a small simple project. I feel like with the way Scratch is, it encourages me to keep my project small. I have a tendency to let small ideas form into really big ones, but with the limitations that Scratch has, it will kind of force me to keep it small. It's also a more visually interesting and easy way for me to show you the coding side of things. So yeah, I don't plan to use Scratch for all of my game creations. I just wanted to try to use it for this first one since I thought it'd be a good introduction. Um, so I am sad because I don't have all the footage of me working on the background. I wasn't screen recording the rest of the process because I thought Clip Studio Paint was capturing it. And it turns out the screen recording option wasn't turned on because I opened a file from my iPad onto my PC. Uh, so we're going to go from this to this. I do have to say, I was really nervous when the background looked like this. I thought I wouldn't be able to make anything that looked good, but we eventually got there. <laughs> to make it so the player can click on the different areas, I made the tree, hole, and cave opening their own sprites. The rest of the background is all one picture. And now that we have the art, let's go over to Scratch. I start by adding my new background to the stage section. Since I am adding in this new background, I need to make it so that when the green flag is clicked, we start at this new background instead of BG1, which is inside the mine. However, this is going to cause some problems because all the stuff that is supposed to be in the mine is spawning outside the mine because I have it set to spawn when the green flag is clicked. So to fix this, I'm going to each element and instead of their coding starting when the green flag is clicked, I have it start when the background switches to inside the mine. This is a little bit of a tedious process, but thankfully it only took a few minutes. Now to see if this is working, I need to add the entrance to the mine. At first I was confused as to why it wasn't lining up properly because I had it as the proper canvas size. But after a bit, I learned that I needed to set the X and Y coordinates to zero and then it lined up correctly. Then I simply made it so that when the sprite is clicked, it broadcasts BG switch and changes the background. Okay, so let's test it. And, oh, that's not supposed to happen. <laughs> you see, in my last dev video, some of you commented that you didn't like the pickaxe looming over the crow when you pet it. So I made it that when the mouse touches the crow, it broadcasts pet. And then when the pickaxe receives this broadcast, it changes the costume to the hand. However, for some reason, the code still works even when the sprite is hidden. Anyways, we will fix this later. For now, let's see if we can go into the mine. And yay, we can. However, we now need a way to get out of the mine. We're kind of stuck. <laughs> However, this is an easy fix. I'll just make it so that the arrow that we use to go backwards in the mines appears in this first area. Easy peasy. Okay, maybe it's not so easy peasy. I could walk you step by step through this process, but long story short, I need to adjust how things show or hide when switching scenes. I also needed to make a duplicate of the arrow, and this duplicate arrow broadcasts a different signal. The broadcast BG switch causes the rocks to respawn in, 
So I need a new broadcast called To Main. That way I can tell the sprites what they need to do when we're going to the main area. And after all of that, we can now enter and exit the mine and the sprites all load properly. Oh, also to fix the hand wanting to pet an invisible bird, I simply just made the bird super small and kind of off screen when we are in the main area. Now that the mine entrance is in place and functional, I add in the sprites for the home and for the shop. I basically just set their spawn points and copied in a block of code that makes them get brighter when the mouse cursor touches them. I'm copying this from my rock sprites I believe. Also I do apologize if it feels like I'm going through things kind of fast. Like I said, I'm not going to reintroduce concepts that I talked about in the first devlog. Anyways, now that we have a shop entrance, we need to make a shop to go to, so let's jump back to Clip Studio Paint. For the shop, I want to have an animal that runs it. I thought it would help the game feel less lonely if there is a character that we can interact with. At first, I was considering the shopkeeper being a gopher. I had some different reference pictures for me to refer to. However, I learned that I'm not very good at drawing gophers since it's not something I commonly do. Plus, the gopher just wasn't having the vibe I wanted. I started to think of other underground creatures and I thought of a mole. I find some moles to be really cute, others are not so cute, I'm sorry. I thought a mole would make for a shopkeeper with the kind of vibe I wanted. I wanted a very chill shopkeeper. For the mole, I went very stylized like how I did with the crow. I kept the features very simple and I actually don't even draw a mouth. I don't know, I just felt like he looks very cute with no mouth. And he probably does have one, it's just like under his nose or something. Many people think that moles don't have eyes when actually they do have eyes. They are just very small and are mostly just for perceiving light. For my mole, I drew him with his eyes closed, kind of like characters you see in anime that always have their eyes closed. After sketching out Mr. Mole, I sketched out the shop. I'm keeping it pretty simple. There's going to be a counter that hides the lower half of Mr. Mole and then a shelf in the wall that holds all of the merchandise. One of the items we will be able to buy is a pickaxe upgrade. It's just a different coloration of the other pickaxe sprite I made and the player will need this upgrade to break a rock door that's in the mine. Next up was the line art and coloring. For the mole, I gave him three different expressions being neutral, happy, and annoyed. I made the annoyed expression because I thought it'd be funny if he didn't like it if the player clicks on him. He doesn't like being touched. The counter is going to be its own sprite so that I can place it on top of Mr. Mole, but the back wall will all be one image and I'll be using it for the background. Once all the art was done in the shop, I added it to scratch. I'm not going to go step by step for this next part because I was basically just once again making it so that sprites appear properly when changing scenes. And this isn't anything really fancy or complicated, it's just tedious. And I also adjust the arrow to make it so that we can leave the shop. The fun part of this was making Mr. Mole talk and interact. Firstly, I made it so that when he is clicked, his sprite changes to the annoyed expression. He asks the player to not touch him and then he goes back to his neutral expression. We don't have any items to buy yet, but when we do, he will change to his happy expression, say thanks, and go back to his other sprite. Oh, I also added that he welcomes the player when they enter the shop. Now that we can go into the shop, we need things to buy, so let's make some art for those. Most of the items that the player can buy are customization items for the crow. I made 5 items in total since I felt like this is all that could fit into the shop. I am drawing these items on top of the crow sprite so that I know they will fit the crow. Uh, first, for all the costume items, to make it so the crow can wear them, I thought I would need to remake all of my crow sprites with him wearing the different items. However, I had the idea that I could just overlay the pieces on top of the sprite. And we'll talk more about that when I'm in the coding area. Also, some of you said in my last devlog that I should have made our companion be a canary. Since canaries were used in mines as ways to warn miners of carbon monoxide and other toxic gases. And that is a really awesome idea and I wish I would have thought of that. But we are going to stick with our crow friend for now. Someone did suggest naming the crow canary and I did find that funny. I did maybe think maybe I could have another companion that's maybe a canary that like the player can choose from. But I don't know if I would get too complicated. So my plan is to just keep the crow for now. Once all the items were done, I saved each one as its own sprite. The canvas for them is about the same size as the one for the crow. And this will help us with sprite placement later. 
Next, I needed to make display versions of the items for the shop. For these, the canvas will be the size of the sprites, but I will also draw in areas that were hidden when the crow is wearing them, so they feel a little more finished. Oh, and I also make a version that has a sold sign on top of the item for when the player buys the item. After making the display versions of the sprites, I was now ready to add them to the shop. So I went back to scratch and added in all the item sprites. For the sprites that the crow wears, I added one and then added the other options as alternate costumes. I started by making it so all the items are hidden when the green flag is clicked. Then I make it so that when the background switches to the shop, the items are shown. Set to the proper size and set the X and Y coordinates to where I want them to be. I repeat this for all of the items. I didn't think of this until now, but I probably should have just fully coded one of the items and duplicated it and then edited it for that specific item and changed the art. That probably would have been easier instead of having to copy each individual block of code to every single item. But it's not really a big deal, I get the same result. Once again, I copy in that block of code that makes the sprite get brighter when my mouse touches it. I wasn't sure how to display the price for an item, so I opted to have the item say how much it costs when the mouse touches it. And then to make the item stop saying the price when the mouse moves away, I have it say nothing. Now the price displays when we hover over the item. Next, I need to make the item purchasable when clicked. So when the sprite is clicked, the costume will change to the version with the sold sign. Next, I wanted to add a cash register like sound when the player buys the item. Sadly, I couldn't find one in Scratch, so I went over to Pixabay and found one on there to use. And I felt like this one was pretty good. So I make it play the sound effect and change our call variable by negative 15. If I left my code like this, the player would be able to buy the item even if they didn't have enough coal for it. And I don't think Mr. Mole would be a fan of that. So let's add an if statement. I make it so that if the coal is not greater than 14, the item will say you need more coal. But this is a bit of a problem. Because of this code up here, it kind of overrides what the item says. So the text that says you need more coal only appears for a split second. To fix this, I decided to make a little sign that displays the price and it'll go under each item. After duplicating the sign a bunch of times and telling it where it needs to go, we now have this. I can get rid of the item saying the price and now I can tell the player that they need more coal when they don't have enough. However, at this point, my brain was like, it's a bit weird to have the item say it when we have Mr. Mole right here. So instead of the item saying the player needs more coal, it's going to broadcast need more. When Mr. Mole receives this broadcast, he will tell the player they need more coal. After doing this, I realized that because now I have Mr. Mole saying that, I could have just kept the item saying its price, but it's okay. I think the little signs are cute. <laughs> okay, so now we have made it so the player needs the right amount of money. Now I need to make it so the player can only buy the item once. To do this, I make a variable called Bop Bandana. Also, yes, I did have to make a variable for each of the items to check to see if they've been bought. Also, I made the mistake at first of making this variable for the sprite only, but it actually needs to be for all sprites so that all sprites can check the status of this variable. And I fixed this off camera by redoing a couple of the variables. Thankfully, I noticed this not too far in. Anyways, when the player buys the item, we'll change the variable to true. Also, I need to make it so that when the game starts, it is set to false. So to make it so the player can't buy the bandana again, I bring in an if statement. So if bot bandana equals true, when the sprite is clicked, the costume switches. I actually change this later to broadcast sold out and Mr. Mole will tell the player that the item is sold out. I repeat this process for all other items so that they can be sold out. So Scratch doesn't really have a way for players to save their progress. And I want to make some kind of way for the player to not have to redo everything. So I'm going to try to implement codes that the player can enter to unlock things. I'm not going to be implementing the code system in this video, but I will make it so that the code appears when the player buys all the items. I wanted to make sure I could get this to work. <laughs> this is going to look a bit funny, but to make the code appear when all the items are bought, I start by putting all of the bought item variables into equals true blocks. And then I drag these into a bunch of and blocks. It looks chaotic, but it gets the job done. So if all of these variables are set to true, this sign will appear with the code. 
Also, I'm going to change the code once the game is released, but this is the one I'm using for filming. You'll have to try to get the code yourself, but you could also just look in the game's coding. Before moving on to the next part of the video, I want to show you the shop in action. So here it is. Lastly, for this video, I'm going to make it so that the items we buy at the shop will appear properly on the crow in the mine. In my next dev vlog, we'll work on a sort of closet system that allows the player to equip the different items. For now, we're just going to get the spawning in system to work. I start by going to the coding for the sprite with all of the wearable items. I make it so that when the background switches to BG1, it'll go to where the crow is and also adjust to the proper size. Now, when I look closely at the crow, the placement isn't too bad, but it is a little off. So I go into the costume area and adjust the arch placement within the canvas. This allows me to fine tune the placement on the crow since moving the item within the canvas also moves it in the game. After getting the alignment correct, I made a copy of this code for each background change. This felt simple, but there was an issue. The bandana wasn't moving properly with the crow because of my load screen. Technically, when the background changes, the crow is still in its old spot, but then it moves to its new spot when the loading screen is up. To fix this, I add a 1.2 second delay, that way the code doesn't start until the crow is in its new spot. Oh, also, I remembered that I don't need a block of code for each background change. I can just have the code run when it receives BG switch, like all of the other sprites. I was so worried I wouldn't be able to get this to work properly, but I'm so happy that it does. I'm a little nervous for making the closet system, but I think I have an idea of how I will code that. Lastly, I need to make the pickaxe upgrade work. The point of the upgrade is to break these rocks. So first I make it so the code only runs if pickaxe upgrade bot equals true. If it's not true, the rock will broadcast too strong. And when the crow receives too strong, it'll let the player know that they need a stronger pickaxe. Also to make it so the sprite changes to the upgraded pickaxe, I simply add this block of code that checks if the variable is true. And if it is, it changes the sprite to the upgraded costume. A part of me wants to show you what it's like when the player breaks the door but I think I'll keep that as a little bit of a mystery. And so that is all I was able to finish for this video. It was a challenge, but also I really enjoyed making the shop and all of the cute little items for the crow. I also really like how Mr. Mole turned out. I'm adding a bunch of different dialogue options for him that I don't feature in this video because I want you to be able to experience him once the game is playable. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed seeing the process of this, and if you are looking forward to devlog number 3, please give this video a thumbs up to help support the series. Before we end, I want to thank my super awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support, it means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!